Cool. Hi, everyone. Um, how are you doing? Have, who here has worked with some of the new component Angular CLI stuff that just came out? Awesome. Cool. Uh, before I dive in, my name is Brendan Niedermeyer. I am a software developer with Expeditors and Cargo Signal, where I build Angular apps and libraries to help track and protect cargo um, around the world. I'm also one of the organizers for Seattle JS. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about kind of what's newer in the CLI, talking about how you generate a library using those components that you build um, in your current projects and sharing them with others. And then, um, so overall, with what's new with the Angular CLI, it came out version 6 on in May. Um, it had a lot of really cool uh, newer tools with that. One of those was Angular uh, schematics. So this isn't necessarily new, but uh, it helps power a lot of these newer, cooler features um, within the CLI. NGAD is another newer tool that's part of the CLI. You can use that to add and configure libraries pretty easily to your apps. Uh, Material is set up with it. Uh, the example here has PWA, um, which helps convert your application into a progressive web app. Um, and there's a few other libraries that are looking at adding it soon. I think NGRX is adding it soon, if not already has it set up with an ng add command. Um, ng update is another new one. Uh, this will scan your package JSON, find any out of date libraries, update them, and then apply any configurations, kind of like with ng add. Um, it's a, if you've upgraded to Angular 6, you've probably used this command. It's super helpful. It'll tell you kind of what's out of sync, what needs to, to happen, and it will do most of the legwork for you. And then we have the new library stuff. So um, to generate a library with the Angular CLI, it's going to be just like you're generating any other component. You're going to be saying ng generate, and in this case, library with your library name. Um, and that will install a few packages, um, create some example files and, and configurations. Uh, in this new directory that's within project and then whatever the name of your library is. Uh, this is really powered, it's the, the build portion of it, by ng-packager, which is a really cool tool. I encourage you to uh, look into and check out on GitHub um, to really kind of learn the ins and outs of, of what's happening with, with your libraries. So um, I'm going to run you through a quick demo of building your own library real quick. So let me make sure that, how's that size-wise? Awesome. So this is just an app that I've created. It has material set up with it. Um, and it's just a plain old normal Angular application. What I'm going to do is go ahead and generate a library. So ng generate library. And we'll just call this my library. And as you can see, it's creating the files that you need. It's installing a couple of dependencies and uh, applying some other configuration updates to your project. Awesome. So um, before we dive into the library itself, I want to show you kind of what this did to your project overall. So with the CLI version 6, we have this new kind of concept of an Angular workspace. So it's no longer just a singular Angular app that you're working with. You can have multiple apps. You can have libraries um, running you know, within the same space, and you can configure those separately. Uh, that's most apparent in the new angular.json file. Um, so here is just the root project that's created when I ran ng-new library demo. This isn't anything new. Um, it's got your build and serving configurations and your testing. Down here, though, is where the configurations for your new library lives. So if you needed to change the prefix, um, you could do that here. If you needed to add in any other configuration changes, this would be the place to make those changes. Um, one of the more handy parts of this is this default project uh, attribute down here. And this will allow you to say, like, if you're running an ng build, which one of your projects in your workspace will be called by default. Um, normally, you have to do like a dash dash project in the name of your project. But this helps you really kind of shortcut um, around some of that more verbose command stuff. So right now, I'll go ahead and change this to say my library. 
so that later on when we build it, we can just say ng build and it will build the correct project. And package JSON, nothing super crazy here. It's added ng packager and a few other dependencies that are needed for the build process. Um, and then in tsconfig, we have these paths here, and I'll touch on those later, but these help us use our library and our application. So then up here in project, so this is a new directory that was created as part of the generate command. Um, you see you have my library source and then some other configuration files. Some of the newer ones you may not be used to is this ng package file. Um, what this does is this configures ng packager for um, use during the build process. So if you need to do things like whitelist a dependency, which we'll talk about later, um, this would be the place that you apply those configurations. You also have a package JSON file here. Um, and what this is used for is this is the actual uh, package JSON that is published with your library when it's built and you release it out for others to use. This is the one that you want to make sure that you keep up to date with your peer dependencies and things like that. So then we'll go into source. And instead of an app like we're used to, we see this lib folder. And we also see this public API.ts. Um, this file is uh, helps ng-packager kind of tell where um, it allows you to clear your public facing API for your library. So uh, if in addition to having your components here that you're going to use, you also need to declare them in here so that anything that's consuming your library can have access to those files to, to run them. It's not enough to just export them from, uh, from your module. And then in lib, we have just some basic example files that are generated for you. These aren't anything fancy or new. These are just normal modules and components and services that you're used to. It's nothing brand new out of the box. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of these files because we're not going to use them in our library. Um, we don't really care about the, the examples because we're going to build our own example. Then we won't need these in our public API.ts because they are no longer part of the public facing API. Um, so first thing, um, let's go ahead and generate a component for our library. So um, our for this example, the component library that we're going to build is going to be real simple. It's going to have a component that's going to be a button that will, um, if you click it, let's have it display the number of times it's been clicked, and then also emit an event so that any consuming application can do something with that data if need be. Um, so we'll go ahead and just like you're used to with the any other Angular app, uh, ng generate component, and we'll call this counter button. And we'll declare the project. Kind of the same workflow you're used to when building other Angular apps. Um, so you see here, it's got our component all set up, and it's added it to our module here. But we need that component because we removed that. So while we're in here, I'm going to go ahead and set up our module for some of the other dependencies um, that the library is going to need. So we're, this button's going to be styled with Angular Material um, just to make things quick and easy. Uh, but to do that, we need to import a couple of modules from there. So I'll do import. Awesome. So now we have everything set up here. We're exporting our counter button component so that it can be used by any consuming application. Um, now let's actually add some logic to our library itself. Any second here. There we go. Okay, we'll add some required dependencies. OK, so all this is doing is it's just keeping track of the um, of the counts of the clicks that have happened on the button. And then down here, this will handle the actual click. It'll increment the count and then emit with an event emitter um, just the current count that's in there. Nothing super fancy. Um, and then for our template, um, here's just a button that uses, as I mentioned before, the Angular Material button, and it's got a badge. Um, the one kind of different thing is as I'm conditioning so that we won't show the badge unless we have a click to display. So it won't just show zero, just a, a style thing. And then we're you know handling handling our click with our handle button click from the component earlier. Um, so 
We now need to add this to our uh, public API so that it can be consumed by any application. And then one more thing I wanna do before I go ahead and build this is I wanna add a couple of peer dependencies. Um, so the main one we're gonna want, if you haven't built like a library in, in Node or anything else, um, peer dependencies are dependencies that any application that uses your library needs to also have installed. So it's not packaged with your with your library, but it's it's something that's a prerequisite that needs to be um, taken care of by whoever's building the application. Um, the only real one that we need to add here is I'll just grab this from is material so that we know that anyone that uses our library needs to have material set up. And that'll and we're good to go. So now the moment of truth. So we've built a component, we've hooked it up with our module, we've set it up with the public API, handled our, our de peer dependencies. Um, let's go ahead and build this thing. So because I set the my library package is the default in your angular json it just knows to run this build process as opposed to like your other normal normal angular application build and this looks a little bit different um this is ng packager running through and, and bundling your your library up to be consumed um it'll do it in a couple of different bundle styles so that different applications can cons consume them depending on what they're using and we get this i'll go ahead and close all of these we get this this folder, and in here, here's our library. So it's ready to use. We have our package JSON. It's generated our types for us. It's bundled everything together. Um, you're ready to go. So now, how do we use that? So using your library in your Angular workspace is pretty much you're good to go right out of the box because this entry in the TS config that I was talking about earlier. Um, what this does is this basically tells workspace that if there's anything referencing my library in an import to go to this path to find those files. So essentially you can use your library as if you had installed it with NPM or something like that. Um, it takes a lot of that kind of, there's no linking or packing and installing locally. If you're just building a library that's used within an application, um, you can just use it straight away. And if you're building a library for others to use, you shouldn't like disregard the the Angular application, that's a, a prime place for you to kind of showcase your library and show an example of how to use it. So use the root app here to show um, documentation and document how your library should be used to others. Um, so because of that, we can now import our library into our, this is the root Angular app here that was generated at the beginning. So I'll say import. module from my, my library. Whoops. Awesome. And so just like before, you can use it throughout your application. Um, at this point, we have our module here. We can go ahead and add it to our imports. And then we can start using it in other applications. So um, this application, let's have it just host the, the component that we have in our library and then for every event that's submitted it'll also keep its own track of the count just to show that it's interacting with your application as opposed to um you know just a, a dumb component displaying some some data for you so we'll have a current count then we'll handle our click or our count changed And all we'll do with this is just set current count to whatever value is emitted by that event. Awesome. Um, so then I'm gonna clear this up a little bit because we don't need all of the boilerplate from a new project just to make it easier to read. And we'll have lib counter button component. And then we want to Oops, there we go. And then we want to handle that count changed event that was emitted. Say, and I'll just do this so that I don't risk mistyping because, whoops, because 
that's annoying when I do that. There we go. Awesome. And then we'll display our value here. Let's go ahead and serve this and show that it's working. Cool. So we go to localhost. We have our application, we have our component here from our library, and every time we click on it, it's updating that component and it's updating the application itself. So we know we have a working um, component library. So there's a few ways you can use your library. As I mentioned, you can do um, building it locally and using it with an application that's really useful if you have a lot of core logics that you need to use across maybe multiple applications. Um, within your workspace, you can pull those out into their own libraries and then inject them as, as needed. Um, you can also do things like use NPM um, to publish that. Um, one caveat with all with your lo using a library locally is that uh, you'll need to run ng build before you serve your app, otherwise the files won't be there, and then the compiler will choke and you'll see blood all over your terminal and it just won't be, it won't be great. So um, if you're using it with NPM, it, it's a pretty similar workflow. You're going to go into the dist folder and then run an npm publish. Um, if you want to test it locally, you can um, use npm link or uh, maybe a local proxy like Verdaccio. Um, but it's helpful for things like this, I found. Then you don't need to worry about cleaning up your, your links um, to your local npm setup. Um, but if you do want a link, you want to kind of, just as it says up here, go into the dist, uh, the dist directory for your project, npm link, go to your new app, link with your library, and then just remember to unlink before you actually install it later on. There are some gotchas, though. They're not too bad. Um, one of those is bundling your assets. So ng-packager currently doesn't support this. Um, it's not automatic. So if you have things like uh, image files or you know a root uh, like style file that you need to include, um, you need to move that in after you've run your build. So the, the pattern that I've used is we'll run ng build and then run a script um, that will copy whatever assets we need into dist and then we'll publish. Um, and then that way everything's in there when it's needed. If you need to flatten your, your SAS files, um, kind of like with Angular Material, we'll have one flattened unified um, style. You can use SCSS bundle to bundle those together and then output that into your um, dist directory uh, before publishing, um, but that that's the right now the best way to do it. I have heard that they're looking at adding in um, asset management in the future, but it's not there yet. Um, and then dependencies is also kind of the other weird gotcha you'll run into um, because if you haven't noticed, you now have multiple package JSONs to keep track of. Um, the pattern that I've found has worked the best has been to keep um, make sure your peer dependencies are in sync with your root package JSON. Um, and so whenever you update that, just copy and paste it or automate some way to update your library's package JSON for the peer dependencies. Um, and then any dev dependencies, just keeping your root package JSON um, and only move them up if you need to, if you want to have them, you know, noted in the in the package when it's published. Um, but then that way, for example, if you're only using material to, to build your example app, Usually you'd have material set up in your in your main dependencies, but you can move it to your dev dependencies because that's all you're going to use it for. And it's a little bit cleaner. Um, if you are deciding that you need to bundle a dependency with your library, um, ng Packager does this nice thing where it kind of tries to guide you to best practices by not allowing any non-peer dependencies um, in to be built with the library. It'll squawk and tell you, not allowed, don't do this. Um, but if you decide that you absolutely have to, you can use the whitelisted non-peer dependency um, key in the ng package JSON to add whatever library you want. Um, so the way that looks like is, say for some reason you wanted a package moment because 
you want to. I don't know why you why you would, but if you needed to package it with your library, um, you need to whitelist it here, or you can just put a, a dot there, and it will just disable that that checking throughout the entire build process. Um, a word of warning, including other libraries as bundle dependencies could cause issues for others working with like a different version of that library, for example, could um, run into some some issues with that. So um, that's about it for me. Uh, in terms of other resources, there's uh, some official CLI documentation up on GitHub. Um, I do have the code samples from this and the slides up on, on my local GitHub, and I'll be posting them on Twitter. Um, shortly after this. And then last month, I wrote a more in-depth article about handling this. Um, and you can go to this short link there to, to check that out. Or you can just reach out to me on Twitter. I'm more than willing to sit down and, and help people figure that out. So um, thank you very much.